Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, after my last video, which was uh, kind of kind of sad and also a little uncomfortable for me, let's uh, let's go to a more positive topic. Sanctioned violence. Yeah, uh, let's uh, talk a little bit about boxing. I'm just going to put some focus on like four fights, four fights, uh, four boxers that you may wanna pay attention to. Anyway, first of all, uh, we have Sunny Go from the future here. I was going to show here a highlight video of Jaime Munguia versus Toriano Johnson, which happened last Halloween. However, the Zone Boxing had blocked my video when I first uploaded it. So I'm just gonna go ahead to the highlight videos and see if I can take out as much of the Zone Boxing footage. I'm gonna try to be more careful next time when I'm featuring boxing footage. Anyway, back to the video. Yeah, so Jaime Munguia, she, he's, a, he's a force to be reckoned with. So Jaime Munguia, 24 years old, from Tijuana, Mexico, 36 wins, 29 by knockout, no losses, clean record, ranked number 6 in the world in the middleweight division. He's someone to watch out for, hopefully someday. He fights Canelo. Let's see if I can recognize some of these names here in his fight record. Oh, Takeshi Inoue. I know him. He's a MMA fighter and kickboxer. Fought for the super welterweight uh, title. And that's the only name. Well, so far he's uh, working his way up. He's only 24 years old. Looks like uh, he fights fairly frequently. He stays active. Hopefully, we're going to see him fight the uh, top contenders next. Now, according to BoxRec, he's number 6th in the world in the middleweight division right now. Who's above him? Demetrius Andrade, Chris Eubank Jr., Jamal Charlo, Gennady Golovkin, and Canelo Alvarez. Who's, by the way, Jesus, that's a big lead. Then again, his BoxRec points. Uh, I don't know what you think about BoxRec. But he did, he did beat the number 9 fighter, Liam Smith. Yeah, look at that. He has a loss to Jaime Munguia. Let's see a few highlights from uh, Jaime Munguia's past fights. He's got a lot of knockouts, so it's going to be uh, fireworks. Oh, look at that. Oh, I I did hear that his best punch is likely his lead uppercut. Yeah, see that? Ooh, mouth mouthpiece flew off. Ooh, he also has a good right hand. Ooh, just folded him. Ooh. Devastating punching power despite the baby face. And uh, he's not very muscular, but look at that. That's the kind of power you're born with. Looks like he really is a born puncher. Bang. There's another left hook. And he can box. He can throw. And he can mix it up. Oh, there's that body work. There's that left. Left of the body. Oh, this kid is devastating. Oh, nice. Oh, there's that uh, left of the body again. Look. Oh, nice. Head and body. I like how he mixes it up. I'm getting some flashes of uh, Salvador Sanchez. That's good. Also a young gun who can both box and uh, brawl in the pocket if he has to. That left hand, man. That's his. Uh, that's his best punch. That uh, that hook to the body and that lead uppercut. Oh, there's his left hook. Oh, and framing. You see that? He's got good defensive skills too. The mark. Uh, one of the marks. One of the marks of a good boxer is that after a combination, they go to. They do something to keep the other guy from uh, hitting them as well. They mix up their offense and defense, and I like that. I like what I saw from Mungia there. After going going into that flurry, when it looks like uh, he's not going to get any more hits, he immediately keeps him at distance. I like that. So uh, Jaime Mungia, watch out for him. I'll see if I can cover more of him in the future. Anyway, uh, up next. Yeah, this happened in November 6th. Junto Nakatani versus Gemel Magramo, Filipino. There's Junto Nakatani. 
also a young gun. 21 wins, 16 knockouts, 22 years of age. WBO World Flyweight Champion. And his latest fight was Gimel Magramo. 24 wins, 2 losses with 20 wins by the way of knockout. Also a knockout artist. And he's from Paranaque. Well, fortunately, uh, he lost to Nakatani in his, uh, in his title shot by knockout in the 8th round. Let's see how that happened. You're going to notice immediately Gemel Magramo's fighting style. And he, uh, he reminds me of a boxer that I started following when I first started uh, watching boxing seriously. Gemel Magramo is in the purple trunks and Nakatani is in the blue trunks. And immediately, you can tell what uh, Gemel Magramo is looking for. He's looking to put his head on his opponent's chest and then whale hooks and uppercuts to the body whenever he can. He wants to take the fight right inside. And he reminds me a lot of uh, El Famoso Carlos Hernandez from El Salvador. And uh, he was basically the same way. Uh, he would turn fights into dogfight. He would turn boxing matches into dogfights. And that was his preferred way of fighting. Just get in there and then just pressure the other guy and hit him right in from the inside. And I'm liking uh, Nakatani's uppercuts. It's not clean, it's not pretty, but uh, if you're tenacious enough, enough but if you're tenacious enough it can be effective this fighting style so anyway eighth round i don't know maybe uh magramo is starting to get a little tired he's doing his best to get right inside and looks like uh, nakatani is uh clinching up whenever whenever he goes in uh, good head control by Nakatani. Yes, it's uh, well borderline legal. Floyd Mayweather is also known to have that as well. As you can see, uh, Nakatani is uh, southpaw here, uh, looking to circle to the outside, but Magramo just suppressing him, just pressuring. This is for a world title, and uh, he's not. Uh, he's pulling out all the stops here. Oh! Oh, big left! Big left! Oh, and he's rocked. Magramo is rocked. You can tell he's, he's now a little bit more sluggish now. He's trying... Yeah. And now just... Nakatani smelling blood. Another left. And now it's uh, Magramo who has to initiate a clinch. But oh, then he is put down. Is he gonna make the count? And referee stops the fight. Well, they are fighting uh, in famous Karakuen Hall in Japan. Everyone in face masks. Uh, hopefully, they're socially social distancing as well. Well, you can count on the Japanese to follow the rules. That must be his parents. Is that his mother? His mother watches his fights. So that's cool. Yeah, show of emotional support for the champion. Yes. Is there a replay of that? Of that uh, final shot and uh, half speed. Left hook. Ah, oh, it's that left. It's that left hook. It's that left hook that, to the temple that brought him down. Well, too bad he didn't win, but uh, good showing anyway by Gemel Magramo. Hopefully, he gets another shot in the future. He shows a lot of heart with his fighting style. Have that kind of fighting style. Getting inside, man. That's where it's pretty much uh, the, the most dangerous range. Anyway, up next, uh, let's uh, let's look at Luis Ortiz, former heavyweight champion, up against uh, Alexander Flores. And uh, you gotta understand that uh, that 41, Luis Ortiz, 41 years of age, he's Cuban though. And one thing uh, you should know about Cuban athletes is that the age that you see on the tail of the tape may not be totally accurate. They kind of fudge their numbers on their papers. Well, that's from what I've heard. Anyway, uh, King Kong Luis Ortiz. Uh, he's trying to come back up after he got uh, he got knocked out by Deontay Wilder, who's now making excuses. Like, what the hell is going on with Deontay Wilder? I think uh, something may be wrong up here. 
like he's displaying a lot of uh, bizarre behavior lately. Well, anyway, uh, this fight is notable not for brilliancy, but for uh, its, uh, its bizarre ending. Look at that. Like, what the hell was that? It's only 34 seconds into the first round. The first round. Let's look at that in half speed. Let's go right to this frame. By the way, for people who make uh, YouTube reaction videos, please use YouTube hotkeys, please. So yeah, it may have been a headbot? I don't know. I don't know if that head actually, if heads actually clashed. So anyway, according to news, uh, the California State Athletic Commission is now investigating Alexander Flores after 45 second knockout loss to Luis Ortiz. His $80,000 purse is being withheld because there are suspicions that he may have taken a fall he may have taken a dive and that's bad nobody in the universe expected alexander flores to put up much of a fight in his november 7th pbc main event against luis ortiz but going down from his third landed punch of the fight may have been a bit of an eyebrow raiser my eyebrows included they're definitely raised like, mm, mm, look at how high that's going you can see the finish. Ortiz definitely lands a flush body shot. Okay, body shot, not a headshot. But it doesn't look like it gets much penetration due to his bicep and forearm smacking into Flores' guard. And it looks like uh, he, he was struggling to get up and the fight was stopped right away. Yeah, you see that? You see that? Okay, that's a better angle. He hits him right here. Yeah, around... The short rib here and maybe the kidney maybe he broke a rib maybe he got hit in the kidney maybe he has a kidney stone there that's possible and that uh, getting hit there uh, really hurts who knows but yeah it looks suspicious though like what the hell happened let's look at it again from this angle so you can see better the shot that takes him oh come on so that's the that's the hit right there Anyway, uh, Luis Ortiz uh, takes that W. And yeah, that's all for now. That was just some boxing. I just wanted to talk about boxing. It's nice to talk about boxing every now and then. It's nice. Anyway, that's all for now. Till next time, stay tour.